figured out your next vid yet? Yeah, I'm actually doing birria tacos. Wait, doing what? Birria tacos. You mean birria? Yeah, birria. Why are you saying it like that? What do you mean? Are you Hispanic? No. Obviously. Then why are you pandering? Bro, what do you mean? Stop saying it like that. You want me to mispronounce it on purpose? Look, if I can't say it, nobody else should be able to. I guess I'm on a birria kick or something because I just made the original stew last week and now this. I've been wanting to fuse Korean flavors into other cultures dishes for a while now. I just didn't think of anything until my friend Debbie sent me some dried gochu peppers along with some other things recently. But the first thing I think of when I think of dried chiles is birria. So I figured making these tacos with a Korean twist had to be good. This is very similar to my regular birria taco recipe which I've done on this channel. Just a few curveballs thrown in there. So for my chiles, of course I'm starting with about 5 dried gochu peppers. I want this to be the forefront of the flavor coming out of the chile paste, but I still want it to be reminiscent of the regular birria that I've had before. So I've got 3 chile guajillos, and 1 chile ancho, and 2 chiles de arbol. I'm just going to snip the stems off and empty the seeds and ribs out because we don't need those. I also have some dried spices which consist of a tablespoon each of coriander seeds, black peppercorns, and cumin seeds. I also have 3 bay leaves, 5 cloves, 4 allspice, and a Mexican cinnamon stick. Everything is going to get toasted, but I'm just going to start with the chiles and the cumin seeds. I want the cumin seeds to be blended up in the chile paste because I like the flavor of it in my broth. The rest of the spices are just going to be added and discarded later. So I'm toasting just for 3-4 to four minutes over medium heat until I can smell this stuff. Then I can dump it into my blender and cover with boiling water to rehydrate it. In the meantime, I'll toast all the rest of my spices in the same way and set aside. And now back to my blender, I'm also adding in a quarter of a white onion that I've roughly chopped. Then about 4 cloves of garlic with the butts chopped off. Then one chipotle from a can of chipotles and adobo. By the way, this stuff keeps forever in the fridge. I've had this open for at least six months, and as long as you don't see mold on it, it's good. Typically, you'll add in a splash of apple cider vinegar here, but keeping with the Korean theme, I'm going to use some juice from a jar of kimchi. It's going to give us the acidity that we're looking for, but just that flavor of Korean food. I am still supplementing with some apple cider vinegar for authenticity. If I was using my brain here, I would have added some of that frozen Korean pear that I have. I meant to add some of that signature sweetness into that salty dish. Koreans often add this to meat marinades or braised meats. It helps tenderize them and make them sweeter. And it's just characteristic of Korean food to have sweetness in their salty food. So add some of that if you don't forget it like I did. Lastly, a good shaking of Mexican oregano and I'm going to blend this into a puree and set aside. And meanwhile, we'll get working on the meat. If you watched last week's video, you saw me using goat meat for the authentic birria, but beef is just more accessible and I think it'll fit better with all these flavors. So I'm using a pound each of chuck roast, short rib, and oxtail. You definitely need some bone-in cuts because of all the braising that's going to happen. It's going to increase the flavor by a lot. I'm just cutting the chuck roast into roughly sized chunks similar to the other cuts that we have. Season everything on all sides generously with salt and pepper. And then I'll grab my Dutch oven and preheat it over high heat and add a good bit of neutral oil. Then I'll sear up all my cuts of meat and make sure I get all sides. I actually fit all three pounds of meat into one batch here and it worked okay. Just give them a few minutes per side and don't play with them too much. I did rearrange them every time I flipped them just to get them in different hot spots on the pot. But as long as you're getting some decent Maillard reaction on all sides, you're good. Especially that fond that develops on the bottom. That's what you're looking for. Once I remove the meat, I'm dumping in half of a white onion that I've diced up. I'm going to reserve that last quarter for garnish later. Hit these with a pinch of salt and use the moisture they release to start deglazing the bottom of the pan. And it should only take 3-4 to four minutes to get these softened up and starting to brown. Just stir constantly so they don't burn. At that point, I usually add in a few tablespoons of tomato paste, which I'm going to do here. But again, to make these more Korean, I'm also adding in a couple tablespoons of gochujang. The sweetness and slight spiciness of this paste is really going to curb the flavor profile of the final dish. It's just one of my favorite flavors in the whole world. Quickly going to get those spread around and toasted before they burn, which will happen quickly so have some water ready to start deglazing the bottom of the pan. You couldn't see it because my camera overheated, but I did that and then scraped all of the fond back into the water. At this point, you're ready to add back in your seared meat chunks, just make sure to get the juice as well that accumulated. Cover that in that chile paste. At this point, you should also add a 14 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, but somebody forgot to buy that at the store and had to add this in later. But also adding enough water to nearly cover the meat. And then I'll season with two cubes of beef bouillon as well as a large spoonful of chicken bouillon paste. Lately I've been liking the flavor of adding both of these to dishes. Then I'll give that a preliminary season with a large splash of soy sauce. Remember these are Korean tacos. Then all those toasted dried aromatics. You could put these into some cheesecloth so you can remove them easier later but I'm going to strain this all anyway so it doesn't matter. And once that's boiling you can cover it and simmer until the meat is tender. I've had wildly different results on when this meat becomes tender. It usually ranges between 3 and 5 hours so I always start checking around 3 hours. But this batch for whatever reason took the full 5 hours. 
Just periodically check with a paring knife and make sure it can go in really easily. That's how you know it's going to be tender enough. But at that point, I'll remove all my chunks of meat, grab two forks, and begin to shred the meat off of the bones and get rid of anything that's not edible. You're just looking for smallest chunks to munch on inside the tacos. You can discard the bones and then take the broth and pass it through a sieve. I should have done this in a couple of batches because it's a little easier to stir around then. But either way, you're just trying to work through all the liquid and keep all the fibers and solids back. It's going to leave you with a silky smooth consomme that's a star of this dish. You do want to season this to taste, and instead of salt, I'm going to use soy sauce. And also, for a little more umami boost, some fish sauce. It's more of an Asian style seasoning, but with this dish being a fusion, it's not off limits. You want this to be good enough to be eaten as a soup, because I'm going to be doing that with some of this. Meanwhile, I'm getting all the shredded beef into a bowl and adding a big ladle full of the consomme just to keep it moist. I'm also hitting that with a couple of pinches of salt to finish. Now we're almost ready to build these tacos, I'm just going to take a ball of queso Oaxaca and shred that up. It's definitely the best melting cheese to have on the inside of these tacos. To create these tacos, you just take a corn tortilla and then dunk it into the consomme, but just on top where the fatty layer is. Lay that into a hot cast iron skillet so it can start to cook on the bottom. Then you'll add in a small handful of the beef and then a small handful of the cheese. Don't overdo it here because you don't want to overstuff these. I give it some diced onion and cilantro on the inside, and after 30 seconds or so, you can carefully fold it over itself and make sure it's even. You're trying to get some nice char on either side of the taco so it becomes crispy. So just use a spatula to carefully flip it every minute or so until you're satisfied with the sear. Repeat that with all your tacos and then give yourself a couple of ladlefuls of that beautiful consomme. Add some diced onion and cilantro to that and then add some of that on top of the tacos as well. Garnish with lime wedges and you can sit down to enjoy your masterpiece. Like I said, these are amazing in their own right and I've made them several times at home, but I just can't help but think the Korean flavors being added to this will make it taste even better. Let's get to one of the most anticipated taste tests of the year. This part never gets old. I mean, this way more favors Mexican cuisine because it favors the birria recipe like almost exactly. We just added a couple of Korean ingredients to it. So I don't know if you can really call this a fusion, but I'm going to call it that because I can. There's just no universe in which any of this is going to taste bad. Provecho y charmo que se Oh man, it's amazing. Yeah, like I expected, it tastes mostly like birria tacos, but you can absolutely tell the difference in the types of chiles that we braise this in. You're used to having that guajillo flavor, which is still in here because I still use those, but the majority of these were the gochu peppers and it really comes through in this. They're a little spicier than the other chiles, so these tacos are more spicy as a result, but that gochujang has its own sweetness to it as well. I really wish I would have added the Asian pear in the paste, but I forgot to. But that's signature for Korean food. They have a lot of sweetness in any of their salty foods. You know, I did the birria stew last Last week and it came out amazing with the goat meat and everything but the dish evolving into tacos really took it to the next level and there's a reason why these are viral across the internet especially with that corn flavor wrapping around all this I don't know there's just nothing like it but there you have it that's my two favorite cuisines wrapped into one if you would have other ideas for a Korean Mexican fusion dish let me know or any fusion dish for that matter and speaking of if everything goes according to plan then next week I should have another Korean fusion dish that I think you'll enjoy but thank you to both Korea and Mexico for having the best food on the planet I can't wait to get back to both countries and eat more and that's gonna do it for me today thank you all for watching be blessed and I'll see you next time man Debbie, you're the bomb for making this happen.